It is my great honor and pleasure to announce that the Naval Lord of the United States has chosen Sergeant Major Michael Barrett, United States Marine Corps retired, to be the recipient of the 2016 Senior Enlisted Distinguished Sea Service Award. Sergeant Major Barrett hails from the state of New York and enlisted in the Marine Corps in 1981. An infantryman by training, Sergeant Major Barrett served in a variety of billets from the Grenadier to Platoon Sergeant. His support assignments included armorer, nuclear biological chemi chemical NCO, and training chief. His numerous billets as drill instructor prepared him for his future role as the 17th Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps, since we all know that drill instructors are known for their diplomacy, tact, and people handling skills. <laughs> so much so that Sergeant Major Barrett was assigned to the Marine Security Company, Camp David, as a company gunnery sergeant and liaison to the United States Secret Service. He was forward deployed during the Gulf War, later became chief instructor at the Scout Sniper Instructor School at Quantico, Virginia, which qualifies the Sergeant Major for membership in the San Francisco Commandery's elite shooting team. <laughs> no grass was allowed to grow under the Sergeant Major's feet because he completed two combat deployments in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom in 2004 and 2006 and he participated in Operation Enduring Freedom from 2009 to 2011 as the 1st Marine Expeditionary Force Forward Sergeant Major. At the same time, he also became the NATO Regional Command Southwest Command Sergeant Major in Afghanistan. So there's uh, you, lots of energy. If you review his personal awards, you'll see senior awards with combat Vs, bronze stars, combat ribbons, and the Presidential Service Badge. It is no wonder that Sergeant Major Barrett was selected to be the 17th Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps in 2011, the highest enlisted position in the Marine Corps. It is also no wonder that the awards committee selected this extraordinary Marine to be the recipient of the Distinguished Sea Service Award, Senior Enlisted. Sergeant Major Barrett, please come to the lectern. I will now read the award. <clears throat> Naval Order of the United States presents its Distinguished Sea Service Award, Senior Enlisted, in honor of Chief Petty Officer Howard L. Snell, United States Navy retired, to Marine um, Sergeant Major Michael P. Barrett, in recognition of unsurpassed and dauntless professional leadership and support to the Sea Services of the United States of America, reflecting singular credit upon himself and his country, and earning the enduring gratitude of his fellow countrymen. He stands primus inter primus. 21 December, excuse me, 21 October, 2016. In addition to this plaque, we also convey the recipient with a life membership in the Naval Order. Um, our Registrar General, Chris Carlock, is going to present him with his um, award. started I have first of all I have to prove um, to my wife that I'm actually working uh, she when I told her that this that this was going down in Hawaii she said yeah right so everybody you have we have to do this smile uh, 
Do we need to dim the lights first? <laughs> I am good to go from here on out. I am good to go. Uh, first thing I want to say is uh, thank you. That was the second best introduction I've ever received. The best was last week when I had to introduce myself. <laughs> no, your words were wonderful. Thank you. They were very, very genuine and from the heart. Uh, my, my, my father really would have enjoyed hearing them, and my mother actually would have believed it. Uh, uh, but before I get started, uh, this is just my trademark. Uh, I don't take a knee, and I hate people who do. <laughs> chosen to break every single Marine Corps uniform regulation that there is and wear a cover indoors, and they're just going to have to learn to live with disappointment. Uh, and I, I did warn, uh, I did warn uh, Michelle as we were having dinner or lunch this afternoon that if it pops into here, it comes out of here, so I apologize in advance because I never stick to my own notes that I write, and sometimes I just get going and you just have to tell me to shut up. Um, but I, I, I did promise that I, uh, no cuss words today, I do, I promise. Um, I just have one, one single page of notes and I'll just, they're just one-liners and I, I'll, I'll try to keep to my remarks because I don't want to make a, a long day longer. Um, but thank you for that very generous welcome. And, um, I am truly humbled by my selection, truly. In my last few months as the Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps, I was returning from a meeting as I negotiated the 22 miles of Pentagon passageways. And it's true, it's 22 miles of passageway in the Pentagon for all of you poor people who've had to do your payback tour there. Um, and it's a beautiful building, but man, does it not wreck your inner child? <laughs> so as I was negotiating the 22 miles of Pentagon Passageway on the way back to my office, I, I came across um, a tour, one of the guided tours that they have there. And it's one of the docents that I had seen and met several times. Uh, he was a young soldier, uh, six foot three, in his dress blues, just one of the sharpest young wonderful Americans I've ever met in my life. And he said, ladies and gentlemen, he said, uh, this is the Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps. And he gave a brief description of my position. He said, Sergeant Major, uh, do, you, do you have a minute to maybe say something to this group and then maybe answer a question or two? And I said, absolutely, anything for you. And uh, right at that moment, a, a young lady um, in her mid-20s um, kind of put her hand up and and she said, um, so how many years have, have you been in the Marine Corps? And I said, uh, 34 years at the time, it's it 34 years. And immediately after that, the young person standing right next to her, also in their mid-20s, said, I thought you could retire at 20 years. Is that not the case? And I said, no, absolutely, you, you can retire at 20 years. And then he, he asked, the, the why question, he goes, well, why did you join and why do you, why are you still serving? Why are you still doing this after, you know, 34 years? And this was literally the thousandth time that I had been asked the, the why question because I've always just taken it for granted and I always thought it was just obvious why people do what they do, especially in, in our profession. And I'm, I'm always, and I always reflect on an old movie. When I get that question, I reflect on an old movie that I saw many, many years ago. And it's, it was an original Sherlock Holmes movie. And I'm talking the old school Sherlock Holmes. You know, Basil Rathbone, yeah. right? Yeah. Circa 19, late 40s, circa 1950 time frame. It's the old black and white. Coming out, Pap, you know what I'm talking about. You used to watch Babe Ruth play for a nickel, right? <laughs> See you I apologize. But my wife says that you're the, the nicest bald man she knows, and I always tell her, honey, I'm standing right here, and she's like, yeah, 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 but he's, he's nicer. <laughs> so I saw you sitting there, sir, and I'm going to have to pick on you. I, I apologize. But 
I, I always go back and I reflect on this particular movie when I get that why question. And let me set the stage. Maybe some of you have seen this exact movie. Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson, they, they went on a camping trip. And they set up their tent and then sometime later they, they went to sleep. Some time passes by and Holmes leans over and he taps Watson. He said, Watson, tell me what you see. So Watson immediately started to scan the area and take everything in, as they did. And he said, well, astronomically speaking, there are billions of planets and potentially millions of galaxies. And he said, astrologically speaking, he said, Saturn is in Leo. Theologically speaking, it's evident that the Lord is all powerful and that we are small and insignificant. Time-wise, it appears to be about a quarter past three, and it looks like we're going to have a beautiful day tomorrow. Why? What does it tell you, Holmes? And Holmes is quiet for a second. He says, Watson, you're an idiot. Someone has stolen our tent. <laughs> And its message is so obvious to me, you know, the obvious is sometimes hard to see. So whenever I get that why question, that movie just kind of pops into my head. And I guess, unless you've lived it, being inspired and surrounded by selflessness and standing shoulder to shoulder with men and women who are truly the most patriotic that you'll ever find on the planet. I'm reminded in one of the patrols I was on in a place called Sac Louis, I remember watching a 19 year old named Ian Dollar dive on his platoon commander in the middle of an ambush, an L-shaped ambush, taking two bullets to the back. And that's because this 19 year old recognized the fact that his platoon commander was not going to survive a fourth or fifth hit to his already bullet riddled body. And then I remember a few days later, just west of Fallujah, north of Fuhilet, we got stuck in another firefight. And I remember watching Doc McKenzie run into the middle of no man's land in the middle of a firefight because he heard Corman up. Running through the middle of that open field, grabbing a Marine dragging him into some micro terrain and started working on it. Doc got wounded in that exchange, saving a Marine. And when I was talking to him as we're putting him on a medevac bird, he said, and I'll be back and I'm gonna do it again because it's one of my Marine brothers. And I remember watching Sergeant Mary Ann Miller, part of the female engagement team in the southern portion of, of the Helmand province after a suicide vehicle borne improvised explosive device killed and wounded over 50 people. She's wounded in the process, taking shrapnel to the torso, her arms and her legs. She stood at the point of friction because everything that follows an SV bid is normally a complex attack and she put herself right in the middle, right where everything was gonna start. And then ultimately, she ended up carrying out the wounded up a hill to a combat outpost. And I remember Sergeant Joe Reitzman. He was leading an Afghan National Police Patrol in the southern portion of the Helmand province in this district called Garmzer. And he was crossing the Helmand River at the kind of a, a crossable point, if you will. When at the very moment he got across, an Afghan National Policeman was swept away by the current. The patrol leader, Sergeant Joe Reitzman, turned, ran, and jumped in the water right after one of his patrol mates. But because of the width of the canal, because of the depth, because of the current, because of the weight of two men, Joe Reitzman drowned that day. But you know what's most profound about that? Is he went into the water after a man whose name he didn't know and a language he didn't speak. Because that's what you do, that's what we do, that's what America does. If you wear the cloth, that's what you do. Their actions, all of their actions, character revealed. Those who wear the cloth of the nation intuitively know the joys and sense of purpose that only comes through great challenges 
and subordinations to a calling greater than self. They know what it means to keep company with the finest men and women in a world under the toughest conditions, and they live their lives right and to the fullest. Our nation needs people willing to walk where lightning strikes. Men and women drawn to a sense of duty. It's obvious to me, it's about American courage and long may it endure, but it is obvious to me why we do what we do and why we do it for as long as we can possibly do it. All I ever wanted to do and be in my life was a Marine. So thank you for this honor. God bless you all. And until we meet again, Semper Fidelis. Aye, 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 aye.